First World War hasn't been something that's been learned about much in, in primary schools up until now. I thought it was really important with it being a 100 year commemoration this year that we did actually do something to commemorate that. So we're, we're doing a history project that ties in with our literacy as well. So we're going to study some uh, stories such as War Horse by Michael Moore Pergo that have a theme of First World War and then link that to a local history project on the First World War. Yeah, and we can piece all that information together and find out about the life of that person. It's really important for a project like this to come into the school because we are getting so much more from it in the fact that when the likes of a local historian can come in and actually put a local bent on what we're doing, then the children realise that it really is very relevant to them. It's not just something that happened 100 years ago and doesn't have any impact on their lives today. And already we're finding that some of the children have links to great great granddads that were in the war. Yeah, if they've got military graves, they're in the local churchyard, aren't they? And what are the stones themselves telling us? First World War means education because it's something that's out of all our realms of history because we've never lived through it. I think it's really important from an educational point of view that we remind and tell children and educate them about what did happen. Yeah, that's right. And um, what can we do with that information? I think it's very important that children not only think for themselves and find out for themselves, so the fact that they've been able to do these lines of inquiry will really give them those life skills because they're cooperating and working with other children. So it's not only really individual but group work that will really sort of spur them on. Can everybody remember what subject we're doing? We thought it important to bring the school children out to the local village churchyard to just explore and get a feel of local history at ground level. It encouraged them to work as a team and conduct their own research. They, they knew that certain family members of casualties were buried in the cemetery. They'd worked off church plans to identify family graves and then they would work as a team to find those particular plots and look for any relevant inscriptions that would assist in the, the research of that individual. This one is one that you might have walked past lots of times going to church, but because it's different, you might not have realised that it was a First World War grave. They, they were really interested. I, th I think they, they very soon realised the importance of the value in doing such an exercise, because when they found military inscriptions, they found that it combined a lot of information they had already found out online and it gave a bit more detail to, to the story. I think getting the children to actually research for themselves and develop their own lines of investigation is really important across any subject in school. We are supposed to teach them to be good historians, so that's part of our history syllabus, but to be able to research covers every part of education. To find things out for themselves is, is at the heart of everything that we do in education. One of the rewarding aspects that's come from the War Stories project is, is seeing the enthusiasm that the children have had for the subject. That while they might not have had a base knowledge in the subject, they were keen to know more about it. One of the Exton casualties had moved to Eccleston shortly before enlisting and being killed in the First World War. So one of the important aspects of the fieldwork with the school children was to go and investigate the Eccleston War Memorial and find the name of Robert Wallbank with relevance to Eccleston but then tied in nicely back with the village of Exton. Wallbank. Can you shout out to the class what that one is? Wallbank. Wallbank, right. So on the First World War section, can you look for Robert Wallbank? And that's his medal. And hopefully the direction we've been able to give to the, the children, hopefully they then will go out and learn more about it and even then spread their knowledge a little further. Have you all done that? I think it's really important for a project like this to be able to give the chance for the children to be able to express themselves and if we can record this, this is the children of this generation being able to put all their information together that they can pass on and we can use in school. This is a really prime example of historical inquiry and do it through children's eyes rather than just a lot of adults giving information. He's buried in Belgium or France. I think the young men and young, young boys must have felt scared but ready for an adventure at the same time. You can use the internet to find out what jobs they did for the First World War and what date they died and everything, what the name was. Women and soldiers, they would take up other um, men's jobs, so they would help in the factories, they would um, um, farm as well, and do like, all the jobs which the men had to do. It's important to remember the First World War because all the soldiers who fought for us and fought for like Britain, if they didn't, 
things wouldn't be the same. Right everyone, just to recap that we've been to the churchyard and what can we find out from looking at the gravestones? I'm sorry. We shouldn't forget and I think because it's history and it's affected so many people we need to put it in the context that it affected families that are, are still here and even though it's a generation that's gone it still affects the parents and children and, and other generations and I think that connection between the present and the past is really important. So we've got the local gravestones in the churchyard that we can look at but if we've artifacts at home they can tell us things as well can't they Isabel? So we're covering our curricular aims but we're also doing it in a more interesting and stimulating way for the children and make it more real for them because quite often in education they'll see me talking at the front of a classroom but when it's me day in day out teaching them it's not the same as having somebody that's an expert in their field coming in and helping them to see things from a different angle and therefore the educational value of that is beyond measure really. And what can we do with that name? Research and find out all about that person.